So mainly what we do with uh, uh, tonight is to just explain a little bit of why, why we do what we do. And I was just uh, looking at the paper today, and I don't know if you guys uh, know about that lady in Oregon that had cancer. Um, and she is uh, maybe like in her 20s, and she ended up deciding that she was going to take her life, um, not considering it suicide, but assisted suicide because uh, they had given her the terminal uh, cancer diagnosis where um, she had no hope supposedly and and the reality she actually died um, today and she uh, um, you know left a, a behind a note saying but this was in, in you know an agreement with the doctors that she was going to do this and take medication so that she can uh, go away and I read that and I'm um, as I'm reading it I'm praying to God because the reality a lot of times this is how sad it, 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 it is I mean the truth is she, she probably had no hope and unfortunately maybe she didn't even know who Christ was. And the, the, the reason we talk about this um, today is because when it comes to what we do in our office, our, our biggest, I guess, idea or the biggest thing we try to do is we want to instill back hope into people when it comes to health. I talk a lot about my mom all the time, you know, she lost her life prematurely. I really feel that she shouldn't have died in her you know, early 50s, but uh, the, the thing is, is that in my eyes, she didn't even uh, die then. She was actually only, when she was 20, she was diagnosed with a, a diabetes, and, and by the time she turned 30, she was on like 10 medications, and in her 40s, on 18. So we literally watched her as children, you know, dwindle away. And so the circumstances in our life, I really feel that I wouldn't be this passionate about what I do if I wouldn't have experienced the, the things I got to see with her. And so this is when it, when it comes to this office, our hope is that uh, people just realize that this is what's going on with America right now, what are the top leading causes of death right now? If, if you understand what's the top two things that cause people to die? Heart disease. Heart disease and cancer. Yeah. And so we all know this. It's not a new number, but the reality when it comes to hitting us at home, like in other words, one or two people die of this, that's half of us, but we never want to be what? We don't want to be this guy, you know, that raises a hand, it's going to be me, because we still think it's not going to be us. And so the truth is, is that this is what's happening day in and day out. We just, it's so common, we, we, start, we start to ignore it. But guess what the number one cause of death right now, that's not even a disease? Obesity. And it's still classified as a disease. Obesity is still thought of as a disease. So the number one thing that I want to make sure you understand today is that the reality, and this is what doctors are literally saying, they're, they're, they're writing the books, they basically said that the number one cause of death right now is not the diseases, but what we take for the diseases. So in other words, modern medicine now, I mean, not that there's not a time and place for medications, don't get me wrong. Like, for instance, don't come here if you have a heart attack, you know what I mean? There's a time and place for medications and doctors and the whole bit. But the reality is that even doctors are saying that in Time Magazine, they ask uh, doctors in the Mayo Clinic, what scares you most about being a doctor? And they said, being the patient. Because they see it that um, every time they sit in their office, the, the scary part is that here comes the newest and latest drug that they're going to introduce to us to give to you. And so they wouldn't want to be the patient because they understand that a lot of times, you know, uh, the people that are in power now when it comes to health is no longer them. Who, who has the most power? Who governs them? Pharmacies. Pharmaceutical companies. So this is the biggest issue, guys, that right now pharmaceutical companies, you know, are even buying your, your, your politicians. You know, they pay for the, the campaigns, the lobbyists go and, camp and pay for this stuff. So the fact is, is that this is not working when it comes to health and compares, compares to all different countries, 37 industrialized countries, we still rank last. If you understand that uh, right now we spend the most money, we have the most uh, you know, medical doctors, most research on medicine and everything, but yes, when it comes to actual health, where do we rank? At the top or at the bottom with other countries? We're at the bottom. So apparently it's not working. It's good for what it's for, you know, crisis, but to build more health, it's not actually happening. We're, we're, we're sick, suffering, and dying way too soon. And this is why I want to make sure that if we're going to be talking about health here, and whether you become a patient or not is not the intent. The intent is that you get the big idea that you understand what true health is because we don't even know what it is. 
and most of the time, like like I said, uh, we're bombarded with commercials and ads. Like here, they're telling these young girls, you know what? Don't worry about having a uh, a, a period. You know, all you have to do is take this drug. And so these these drugs, like like this one's a birth control pill. If you look closely in the back, I mean, everywhere. Um, you, you turn, you know, it says right here, blood clots, liver tumors, high blood pressure, and cancer of the breast. But who reads the back? And so this is the thing, guys. These, these hormones literally are causing cancer. The number one thing with women now is what? Breast cancer. Breast cancer, right? And, and the intent is great, but these paying funding things that they have, the campaigns, for 40 years this has been around, and have they solved the issue? And the money always gets raised, and, and they try to solve the problem, but where does that money go back to? To make more what? More drugs. Yeah. More drugs. You, you guys see this? So the thinking is still the same. Albert Einstein said, you know, you can't solve a problem with the same level of thinking that existed when the problem was created. So in other words, we're doing the same thing. It's a definition of insanity. And so this is what's happening. We, we uh, know that these drugs, mechanistically they work. Like if you have a migraine, you take a Tylenol or, or an Advil, it goes away. But the fact is, is that they all have consequences, like this one's going to stop the reoccurrence of breast cancer, but if you look closely in the back, it says carcinogenic in bold print. It says that those related incidents was occurred in ovarian and uterine hyperplasia. So even though it fixes one thing, they always have what? Side effects. They have a side effect. Crystor, I'm going to have lower cholesterol on a test, <coughs> but yet if you look closely, you're still going to probably die of a heart attack and stroke, it says, in the front page. But nobody reads the front. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And so I can go on and on. I'm being, I'm going to want to sleep better, so I take this. But the consequence is I'm going to want to kill myself. Suicidal tendencies. And this is the issue, guys, is that, um, you know, you may be saying, well, I'm not on medications. Why are you telling me this? And I feel that this is where I have to start because we live in a culture that this is what we get taught. That, you know, as soon as little Johnny is born, automatically we're trained to think that this child has been left unequipped. And that somehow we know more than that power that created it. And then we go, you know, the minute he gets a fever, we think it's a bad or a good thing. That fever. I always think it's bad. We think it's a bad thing. When in essence, that fever is the child's response to a bacteria to try to fight it. It spikes up the, the temperature. But we don't trust that. And then before, you know, or we get told fear tactics of, you know, you're going to get, you know. The reality, guys, every time it spikes to 104, that fever stimulates interferon, which is a chemical that helps you actually build an immune system. So every time that happens, your body builds what we call T1-mediated response, which is you build warrior cells, B cells, that are going to help you attack the next time. So next time you get it, your body gets stronger. So every time you're getting exposed to something, your body only gets what? Stronger. Stronger. It's like a muscle. So now you didn't do that, and so the reality we get kids that are always now dependent on antibiotics and now they're getting resistant to that, not to mention all the vaccinations. I can go on and on. Long story short, guys, the reality is that this child now, as he gets older, so got dumped by his girlfriend, wrestling team maybe didn't make it, he's depressed. So what's the experience ever since he was a child? I feel bad. I got drugs. I feel bad. Drugs. Doctor gave me drugs. Mom takes drugs, everybody's on drugs, so it's okay to take drugs, guys, and it's no longer cocaine or something that they go get high on. Now, literally, these kids are, are now succumbing to, uh, you know, the Oxycontin and Vicodin that mom and dad has and getting high on that, and you think maybe I'm extreme, but I'm not, guys. I see this day in and day out where we see some kids here who have, you know, had some s severe issues. I work with um, uh, a lot of uh, athletes. Um, some of the kids that I work with are on all these bipolar medications, and and this is the thing, guys. And, and I, I started asking about five of them were on in one season when I did it, and I'm like, okay, what's going on with you guys? And they all had the similar story, which which, which frustrates me. With when they're um, hyper, now these kids get put on these like Ritalin stuff, and so all of them had a similar story. I was on this medication when I was young. But these drugs, it's amphetamines, which literally it's cocaine, so, so it's a date you, you know, so you don't even know who you are. And as you get, you know, older, then you actually feel a little bit anxious or anxiety sets in and stuff, but not to worry because now we're going to be putting you on this drug, and look, it says right here, increases suicidal thoughts. 
And I'm telling you this, guys, because this is where the media does not point, because everywhere, these kids, that if you look in the media right now and you turn on, uh, turn on the news, there's another shooting of another uh, you know, kid or another one in school, even this girl who has lost hope because she had, was diagnosed with something, we don't even know where to turn anymore, and it's sad, the reality, it's no longer guns. I mean, I don't know if you guys know that the, the, the whole explanation with these suicide shootings was what? What did they blame it on? It was what? Bullying. It, it, it was guns, right? And so I don't know if you, if you, if you know that, but I have a gun. I don't know if you guys, but I have a gun. Yeah, <laughs> you know, a lot of me. You know? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so you know, when you start losing well, who you <laughs> are, you start doing this stuff. But it's you know, the, the fact is, that we just uh, have to remember who funds the media. The Every ABC, yeah. CNN commercial is a is a pharmaceutical commercial. Right. So this is where we got to turn back to what's causing these issues. Is we don't even know what true health is, and this is where this is stemming from. And I have to tell you this, guys, because this is the craziness that's occurring right now because we don't know what health truly is. And it's the most important thing. I don't know if you guys know that. Um, like if you have a child, uh, I would I would do whatever I could for my kid's health. You know. I don't know if you, I mean, whatever, if you have a spouse, you know how, how vital that is. And so if health is the most important thing, then we should know how to define it, right? So I challenge you right now, what what would that definition be in your eyes? What, what is health? When I am not now. <laughs> okay, well, that's, that's a good start. At least we're conscious of it. But the reality, most people base it on what? Like if I were to ask you right now, if you're healthy, most people base it on what? Weight. How they feel. How, how they, they feel, feel really. Weight. How they feel. Yeah. If I woke up feeling happy and good today, I, I, I would say I'm healthy. And so, and then if I, if I don't, then I'm, 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 you know, unhealthy. But typically when you feel bad, where do you turn in our country? Where do we turn? Medications. To the system, the medical model, right? Which there's a time and place for that, right? But the reality, what, are, what is the only thing that they have available is either going to be what? Drugs or more drugs. Drugs or more drugs or, or surgery. Those are the options, guys. And so that's for crisis. Thank God system. If you have a heart attack, don't go here. They're going to go save your life. But the reality is that by taking those medications, is it building your health? And so I have to, I have to tell you this because... That was my, my dad, he was mowing his lawn when he felt, he would brag, he was 73 when he got his first heart attack. And, but you know, um, being Hispanic, he would uh, always say, it's my genes, I, I have good genes, I, uh, you know, I can drink tequila and eat all, all the bad foods and it just, I'm healthy, you know, and he, and I would like, okay, dad, I can't change you, but, um, you know, I, 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 he, he's not gonna listen to his daughter. That day when he got his heart attack, he felt great. Had no idea he had a problem with his heart. He was mowing his lawn and, and uh, fell over of a heart attack. And at that point, you know, luckily my uncle was there. He rushed him to the hospital. And the guy that did his uh, whole operation, the guy, the cardiologist, walked in with us uh, the next day and he said, Your dad had 100% occlusion of his coronary artery to, that supplies the heart. And they did that rotor rooter thing on a stent or something like that. Amazing stuff that they do. They saved his life. But the guy, you know, was telling us, is like, he had no idea because there was no what? No symptoms. The day before, he had no idea. So these top leading killers, guys, heart disease and cancer, there's no symptoms until there's an, a crisis. I don't know if you guys know, we all have cancer right now. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're aware of that, right? So we were all born with cancer cells, but yet God knew that that was happening, so he put what into our body? what already exists in our body. Isn't it like enzymes or something? An immune, an immune system. Mm -hmm. The immune system is always attacking it. You have natural killers that's always bringing it down, checking it. But if this is cancer cells and this is your immune system and you're always depending on a medication, and a biotic, a vaccine, not to mention McDonald's, stress, who's winning? Probably the cancer cells, right? Yeah. And the body brilliantly knows that there's so many of these cells, so what does it do? It puts it into a tumor. I don't know if you guys know, it encapsulates it into a tumor. But you have no idea it's there because there's no what? No symptoms. Yeah, you have people with three-inch tumors had no idea it's there because there's no signs until when? Until it's already late. 
and so this is when it starts spreading. Or sometimes people say, well, I'm gonna, you know, uh, let a test tell me like mammograms or PSAs and all these things that tell you. Well, fancy test, but the foundry have been said, you know, this, um, uh, this uh, mammogram can't even detect it that there's four billion cells. So Charles Simon of the Cancer Institute said he can't find it so there's four billion cells. So you go today, and let's say you only have two billion, and they get you tested. What's the likelihood they're gonna find it? So they tell you you're okay, right? Because they don't find anything. And so you go home and do what for your health? You throw a party, right? Because, <laughs> you know what I mean, you're fine. So this is the issue, guys. We do nothing until when? When will they find it? When it's already huge. Mm -hmm. So this is where should you base your health on how you feel? Or on a test even? When should we do something about our health? Like we should start it away way long ago, but it's never too late. And this is how beautiful our bodies are made to renew. Our minds, like in the Bible, it says you were made to renew your mind. Our bodies can do that as well, but this is where it should start immediately, as fast as you can. And so what I want to do is make sure you understand what true health is, because it's not about how you feel. And then I have the other spectrum, which is the wellness crowd. When I work with athletes like um, these guys, are fun to work with, but they're the hardest because they're basing their health on what? Most of the wellness crowd thinks that they're healthy because of what? Because they're strong, they've got muscles. They're they got out, muscles, they athletic. exercise. Because of the way they're eating or exercising. They eat, supposedly eat, right, you know, um, so all these things. We teach all this stuff, vital things, but they're hard to work with because they're basing it on this stuff. When in essence it's more than that, guys. We teach all these five essentials and we try to steer people in the right direction, but watch, you take a dead body and I put into this dead body green detox juices, oxygen, will it know how to utilize that green juice I just put in there because apparently he's what? He's dead. He's dead, so he can't, right? So what truly heals you? What makes you take up that green nutrition, put it into a cell, take that oxygen, put it into your lungs? What actually heals you? Being alive. <laughs> Amen. You answered it. Because sometimes people say, well, your, your brain, your heart. Well, watch. This dead person has a brain and a heart and the nerves. But the only reason it can't heal a cut, if we both have a cut, who's the only one that heals? The live one. So if you're alive, can you heal? Yeah. Yes. 100% of the time. God put an amazing power in our body that from two cells, it didn't even have a brain or a heart and immune system. It had two cells. And God breathed life into it, and then what? Four, six, it multiplies, like dramatically. And then it's forming a baby. I don't know if you guys know, this is the first structure that forms, a neural tube. It's basically like, like a vehicle. It's a, it's, a, it's a hose that carries that life potential, energy, whatever you want to call it, electricity. I don't care how you label it, but it's that power that runs through you that 22 days later, then all these things form. But for your heart to beat, there still needs to be what that flows through here. It still has to be in your nervous system. And everything. But what, what specifically in your nervous system? Because you can have a dead body with a nervous system. It doesn't know how to heal a cut because there's no what in it. No life. But life. And this is if I cut that nerve that goes to the heart, what happens each time? If you cut the nerve? If I cut the nerve that goes to your heart right now, what happens to you? You probably die. Right? Yeah. So who wants to try Right, it's, it's 100%, so this is like, sometimes people say, well, I don't believe in, you know, this life or whatever. It's not a belief system, it's a principle, guys. You fall off this building, what's always there, whether you believe it or not. Gravity to bring you Right, down. it's a principle, there's yeah. a gravity. This is the principle of the law of life. There's a power, you can call it electrical conduction of sodium, potassium pumps, whatever. I don't care how fancy you get, it's a power within the system that, like, electricity flows. It's not blood, it's like electricity that flows through these nerves. So this is where why we take this so serious. You guys know Christopher Reeves? Uh, when he fell off his uh, horse, you know, a long time ago, you noticed that, that story of Superman. Um, he was, what happened to him? He severed that first vertebra. And if you guys know this atlas here, uh, a little bit of pressure and what happened? He had broken his yeah. yeah. So, so, So he was paralyzed, right? right? But if you dug into his story, everything, this area that Vagal nerve supplies all the hormones, all the organs, everything. So was his brain able to talk to those organs? Everything shut down. Luckily, man went in there. I don't know if you know his story. Um, uh, they put a pacemaker, a, a 
heart, you know, for his heart to breathe. They had machines, so artificially they kept the man alive. I'd take nine more years. They gave him nine more years he lived. I'd take the wheelchair, but I could see my kids grow up. But after nine years, what did he die of? Do you guys remember? MS? No, he had, or, oh. he had actually everything. You look at his biography, go Google it. Everything started to shut down. He had pulmonary disease, he had heart disease, everything, all his gut. He had physical therapists that actually would have him go, you know, like, have to go to the bathroom. They would pump uh, everything out because nothing was functioning from within. So he was literally, you know, when, when they showed his picture next to his wife when he died, I don't know if you remember that picture, maybe you guys, but um, the, the, the 50 years old, when I think was when he died, the lady was standing up and he was in a wheelchair, and she looked like his daughter, like he looked 20 years older than him, than her. Why? Because he was literally what? Rotting from where? Yeah, rotting from the inside. Was his brain talking to those messages to heal those cells? Every 120 days, your body's replicating new cells. So outside in, machines were doing a great job keeping him alive, but it will never be like that power that resides within you, that heals you, that basically makes you renew every day. So this is why, guys, I want to make sure you understand this, that in our culture, we think that health comes from this pill or this vitamin or whatever. I mean, great stuff, but the reality, it's never going to be like that power that's already in you, that's within you right now. So this is where we want to remove those interferences that are not allowing it to work. And it's, it starts with number one, even before this stuff, the spinal stuff, in number one, in, in your mind, you still believe that you can't get better, that you're not worthy to get better, that you have no hope, that you're your cancer, your diabetes, your heart, whatever, whatever disease or label, that's a lie. Does that make sense? Because whatever you believe, so it is. And that's where I can't help people who still believe that. And this is where, in my eyes, to me, essential number one is even this alignment spiritually. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, I'm done. I don't care how many adjustments or green juices we give you, you, you still have no hope. And this is where we start, guys. Number one is that. Number two, yeah, definitely if you have physical interference that's compressing a nerve down here, you know, that goes to your gut, I can change all the right nutrients, but if there's still pressure on the nerve here, how are you going to assimilate it? At 100%? No. You know, if there's nerves here, how is the thyroid or hormones going to function? Probably not. So we want to make sure we remove interference physically. And then, of course, nutritionally, if you're not getting the God food and you're not getting the right nutrients and you're living off of Cheetos and Pop, you know, your body can only live so I mean, it's amazingly able to utilize that for some years, but after a while it starts to decay. You know, if you're not exercising any of the right oxygen, toxicity right now, so many toxins are destroying our hormones, and then before you know it, you get labeled and get on more drugs, which are more toxins. So our job here do is, is our job, my job, is to remove that interference, but guess who has to do the work? And that's the thing that before we even do anything here with anybody, so we have to make sure you understand that here it's not just about us popping your spine or whatever. This is about removing interference to the system that basically created you, that basically throw, flows through the body. So as a chiropractor, now, do you understand? Let me ask you this. Have you been to a chiropractor? Okay. Did they sit you down and teach you this principle that the power made that, that made you heals you? that God doesn't need any interference? Yeah. Why, why do you think? And this is where I have to tell you this because in my profession, sadly to say, this is the principle we were founded on. This is what B.J. Palmer, the, the founder of chiropractor, this is the principle that the, God put an amazing power in our body, but we just need to remove interference. It sounds too quacky, guys, that we got labeled, you know, and we started to adapt and say, I'm going to conform because I don't want, I'm going to teach pain, come to me whenever you pain. And by the way, I'm only going to see you 12 visits because your insurance here tells me, you know, that you can only uh, come here 12 visits. I can care less what a Blue Shield, Blue Cross girl tells me, guys, on the phone. I'm going to give you what you need. And by the way, if, if this is not for you and you feel I'm kind of quacky, you know what, I'm going to love you no matter what, but I'm going to teach your truth. This is what we do. This is what, what our office does, and so this is where it's sad that even my profession has kind of kind of conformed because we don't want to be labeled. I'm going to teach you that this is what needs to be done, but the reality, it does take work. Now, as I showed you with your x-ray privately, I do want you to understand what a normal x-ray looks like. And so uh, I'm going to show you uh, specifically uh, the curve of the spine. 
of the neck. From the front, it should be straight, but from the side, you have these three curves. And so, so you know, logically, it should be straight, for, but from the side, the head should be on top of the shoulders and shoulders and the neck. And what's happening with today's culture with our, with our postures? Getting too much curvature. Why do you think? Why do you think it's going forward? I have no idea, but I know my, my mom's whole family, every one of them. Yeah, we're, we're more forward. sedentary than ever. Then <clears throat> technology doesn't help, you know, everything is computerized and everything. So, so instead of having this arc right here, what's happening is, if you look at this MRI over here, so this is an x-ray and this is an MRI. Okay, so it's the same view, but you're looking at an x-ray, you see bone, just like that one. On an MRI, you see that white tissue, that soft tissue. You can't see it on an x-ray. You catch it on an MRI. So this is the side view. So what you're looking at here is that spinal cord that you see right there. On end, that's um, that, that white thing that you see right there is this cord right here. So on end is that cord that you see right there. Okay. So you're looking at it on there. When there's a curve, there's no pressure on that cord. So this is functioning pretty good. The discs, those are the, mat the material is right there. There's no pressure on it. You lose that curve with time. That's called subluxation. Subluxation is just a fancy word that you have misalignment. So now what's it putting pressure on? If this is shrinking, what's it putting pressure on? It's putting pressure on your back and everything. Your spinal cord. It's actually yeah. literally stretching that spinal cord. So you take that, that, that curve and you push it forward. It stretches that cord. So what's the function of that person here compared to this one? Less or more? Less. The problem at phase one is that there's still no what? No symptoms. Yeah, it's kind of like a cavity. Sometimes you have no idea you have one because there's no symptoms. So people don't do anything about it. They ignore it or they'll take what? If there's like a little bit of rigidity, so this is phase one right here, maybe that disc is a little thinned out so you get a little stiffness, then what do we do for stiffness or pain? I mean, it's not, or stiffness. I mean, two as we go. Yeah. <laughs> so we, if I take the whole bottle, what's the whole difference? Probably not good, right? So the thing is, is we're just waiting for time to do it. And so your body gets toxic. Now with time, your body, if, it, if it's sitting like this year after year, that disc starts to dehydrate. Gets to the point, and this happens with decades, guys. This doesn't happen overnight, but watch. Just like a cavity, this starts to rot. So bone rubs on bone, your body puts more bone. They call this degeneration. I mean, a lot of arthritis, spondylosis. I can care less about the word, but now what's happening to this? Now it's really, you're going to be in a lot more pain. So what's happening to the nerve? It's slowly what? It's being deteriorating. Yeah, it's deteriorating and being smashed. So if there's no life, it's literally dying. You. you guys yeah. see this? At this point, this is when the body starts to tell you more. You'll have like arm tingling or numbness, leg tingling, you know, or pain or numbness. So you start getting some signs. So so the body starts to say, okay, well, well, not, those nerves don't only go to the arms and legs, they go to the gut. So you're wondering why you can't digest your food. Why are you having difficulty with sexual issues or dribbling? You're wondering why you can't, you know, your gallbladder is function, not functioning, your liver, your thyroid. So now you're at the doctor with these newer symptoms as time goes by. And they're not going to look here. Where are they going to look? They're just going to look at whatever is over here, right? And yeah. so now they're going to diagnose whatever part has a symptom. So thyroid issues, gut issues, whatever, colitis, whatever. And now what? Once you get the diagnosis, it's the give you more drugs. And if that doesn't work? They give you more drugs. And, and then they if that doesn't surgery. work, then finally they'll yeah. say a specialist, or then finally they'll say, you know, well, let's just cut that out. You know, you don't need half of your colon. You don't need your uterus. You don't need your gallbladder, your thyroid. You know, you know, here's, a, you know, with my mom, I'm, I'm describing my mom, guys. This was her, and I remember, um, um, you know, the reality, this does not matter, the physical parts. What I will never forget was that one night when um, she was uh, in her late 40s and uh, was um, dependent on my dad for her. She had, um, you know, a lot of issues with her uh, gut and stuff and sometimes even had to change her diapers and stuff. And for the first time in her life, my dad wasn't uh, there and she had to ask one of uh, my sisters and I to go do it. And the crying and the tears were not a pain. 
were merely just a lack of self-worth. And I tell you this because this is the, the stuff that, the anchor, that I anchor to because the fact is, is that this is us when we do nothing. She should have been there a long time ago but did nothing or knew not what to do. And then before you know it, the years pass on and we just, she just thought it was a normal thing to be on all these things. And there's a way that seems right to man, and in the end, it's a way to death, guys. And this is where Proverbs 14, 12, you know, the fact is in our culture, we think this is the right way. But it's leading to premature death. And I'm going to tell you this because who's teaching people out there about health? About health? Not really anybody. You know, the, the truth is, is that there is, and it's all these guys. And they're telling you what? Take more drugs. And, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be a little deep here, guys, and maybe you you're, you're not. Um, but it's in Revelation, so in, what's this? It's more their version of it. They think that this is it, but watch in Revelations. You go look this up. Don't take my word for it. The word pharmakia. You guys know what that means? Pharmacy. Pharmacy. And the word pharmakia in Revelations means sorcery. And this is where I'm going to tell you that these things, guys, is there's a time and place for this. And I used to not talk about this, but uh, this is the biggest issue is that this is um, the, what's happening is that we're like sheep without a shepherd being slaughtered to death. And we don't even know what true health is. And we even lost hope in him. We have more faith in that stuff than that power that made us. So this is what this whole principle here is to teach you what health is. Now you understand as you see an x-ray like this, what's happening with this kid? What do you notice? The neck is straight. So if it's straight, it's putting pressure on what? The cord. So now you understand, this kid was uh, had seizures. The only reason he was referred because his mom was a, a friend of a patient that I have, and her patient talked to the, the mom, said, why don't you go try Dr. Rosie? And of course, like a lot of people, you know, she was skeptical. And when she brought the kid, she's like, well, my kid has seizures. I don't think you can help them or heal him. And I'm like, I'm not here to heal your, your kid. I'm here to just try to remove interference. He heals. I don't. Right? So I said, let's just watch his x-ray. This is his x-ray. And if you understand, it's putting pressure on here. And I'm like, and I'm explaining this to her. She's like, well, why didn't the doctor tell me this? You got to understand, like, the medical model versus um, what we do as chiropractors is very, the philosophy is very different. They're looking for what on an x-ray? They're looking for what they can drug. Basically. No, they're, they're trying to Just help. looking for what the problem is. What's that? Looking for what the... Yeah, like, but, but what's the, what's their, they're keying in on pathology, like crisis, like fractures, tumors, you know, we actually have to look for that ourselves, but what they're not seeing is like an architect and an engineer, we're looking at structural issues. If there's interference here, and maybe there's no cancer or stuff like that, but how is it putting pressure on this cord? It's, it's probably, yeah, yeah it's probably, it, that, that's causing interference. And she's like, well, um, you know, how do you get like that? And you guys... I have to understand with everything we do, falls, trauma, I, but I always start at the birth process because nowadays with kids, it's sad, but the mom gets told, you know, you have to have this kid on this date, and if it doesn't, you know, arrive on this date, what's the number one thing that gets done? C-section. And so this is the issue. She was not on time, and so, of course, they tried to induce for it for that. didn't work out. It was already kind of halfway out, and so they had to do the vacuum uh, extraction. Um, when they did uh, that, she said, you know, yeah, I remember it was bruised, and she started to now put in the pieces. She was, he had ear infection, he had projectile vomiting. All his baby, he was always having, like, projectile vomiting. Then he had uh, an asthma at three. So that vagal nerve that was affected here starts to affect everything. You guys see this? At the age of five is when he got Imitrex, and Dilantin is a drug that they use. Um, I mean, uh, Imitrex was the drug that they use for... Uh, the um, the headaches and the migraines, and they gave him um, that Imitrex, which caused seizures. And from there on, he had had seizures, and he was on that line and all that. Long story short, guys, the only reason she was in here at that moment is because my uh, patient, who was a, a friend of hers, told her, because he had been at the doctor, was going into junior high, I mean, to yeah, to, to junior high or high school. But the kids were making fun of him because of his convulsions. So now he didn't even want to go to school. So they classified him as depressed, antisocial, and what were they going to put him on? Probably Ritalin. No, no. Uh, antidepressants, uh, anti-anxiety drug, whatever. 
and so my, my, my patient understood the, the, the issue with these things and, and so I'm like, well, she's like, well, why don't you go talk to Dr. Rosie? I'm like, you know, you've been doing this for 12 years. Maybe there's another way. I don't know if I can help him, but let's try something. Maybe get him off Fruitless and Pop. Maybe eventually get to the point where he doesn't need all these medications. I don't know. Let's do something. And so sure enough, with kids, what's beautiful about them is that they don't have all that junk like, like this. You know, there's still space in between the discs. So we can change this pretty good, but we still need to have him do the work. So when we have you guys like do the head weights and all the, like the trashing, all the stuff that we do here is to empower people to do for themselves. Just like um, a dentist, you guys brush your teeth and floss hopefully. And so dentistry has done a great job teaching people to do what they need to do to fix their teeth, right? So they don't depend on just the dentist. What we as a profession with chiropractic have lacked is empowering people, and we're about empowering people. So we give people specific things that they will do for themselves, not only depend on me with the adjustment. So these head weights, and they look goofy, it looks awkward, but these head weights will allow these muscles to recruit. So as your head goes forward, the, the head here, the weight, will allow these muscles to bring you back. Kind of like if you wear a backpack, your body doesn't want to go back, it does what? The abs recruit. So we're teaching your own body to do what it has to do to get these curves back in there. So uh, with kids, it's beautiful because they respond pretty good and pretty quickly. Um, about a month later, you know, to, the mom's telling me that she's been weaning off some medications. And I'm like, okay, whatever, that's up to you and your doctor. I'm like, she's like, well, he's actually feeling pretty good instead of getting worse off the medications. I'm like, awesome, let's keep at it. I don't really focus too much on symptoms because do symptoms tell me how healthy you are again you know that's great awesome I don't want you to feel better but that's I want to see what function I'm like let's see what's going on this is at a, about two and a half months in we re-x-ray to see what's, what what uh, changes are occurring and what do you notice nice curve uh, now and this is this is the thing guys I see this all too often specifically with kids because they respond pretty quickly if they're doing their stuff more important than an x-ray to me is the story behind this x-ray and why I get attached to uh, some of these stories is because it wasn't about the x-ray, it was about the little kid. When he comes back and he tells me, Doc, I, I'm going to go be able to play on the, on the field. I'm like, what do you mean? They didn't want to allow him on the soccer field because uh, of the risk of, of his seizures and all that. And when he told me that, I'm like, I can only imagine my kids would one day tell me they can't do something. I could go kick that coach, I'm sorry, but uh, you know, this is the thing is that when, when, when people are living the potential they're supposed to live, that's what, that's what matters to me. You know, the x-ray, awesome, whatever, to me is that you're living that abundant life that, that you're called to live. And now as a kid, it's, it's pretty easy to see changes like this, but as an adult, and this is where I want to make sure you understand that, um, I'm going to put this up. Guy, guy up here, this 40-year-old, um, not too old, but what do you notice? Starting to go head forward. So yes. you're starting to see what I what I see. So instead yeah. of having this way, his head's forward, and it's actually arcing the yeah, other way. Yeah, the wrong way. Yeah, ligament damage from car accidents. So the body at 40, and now I'm 40, so I don't think it's old. I'm old. I don't have DK like this. His is already forming some DK here. Now, this is the body doing this arthritis there. Is the body doing what? the right thing at the right time for the right reason because it's trying to fuse that area so it doesn't put pressure on what's back here? The cord. The cord, yeah, because it was putting pressure. So he had numbness down his arm. And see this atlas, how it should be angled up like this? It's dipping down. So guess what it was putting pressure on? His no. brain stem. So he had severe migraines. And this is the main reason he walked in. And he's like, you think you can help me with these migraines? because I can't even stand being around my kids anymore. And the reality is that when you get these, the light sensitivity, sound, everything affects you. I'm like, Daryl, you have some ligament damage. I don't know, you know, we'll do the best, but you're gonna have to do the work. And this is where with the weights and all that, and I'm like, we'll just see. We reassess like two and a half months into care, and there was not a lot of change. This is gonna take some time. But the beautiful part is that he's out Burger King, you know, he stopped smoking, he started making some lifestyle changes. I'm like high-fiving him, okay, I'm like, Okay, that's awesome stuff, but we want to still get rid of your migraines. So that's that's huge. So we put more weight on him. We brought him down for like two or three times per week the first two months to like once a week or whatever. Little by little, he did more at home. It's about the fifth month, and this is a, a bag I keep, guys, because uh, this one here I always keep aside 
because this is the one he brought me about five months in care. And I said, okay, what's this? He's like, well, this was me. And I'm like, I thought you had migraines. And he didn't really share the rest of the story. He's like, well, I couldn't sleep. I had anxiety. I had depression. I had um, muscle relaxers. I'm like, I'm like, and you got off of all that because these are hard to get off of. And he's like, well, I just don't want to. I'm like, okay, whatever. That's that's your call. But I, I'm. What matters most to me, guys, that, that that people don't have to do that, but that we're changing it too. And he started to feel better. And that's why he was doing that. But this is his X-ray at that fifth month. What do you notice? The backwards curve is gone, and he's starting. To move yeah, he's not back. like this. But yeah. if you notice, it's, it's starting to come back. There's still DK. That's not going to go away. But that little bit of pressure off of his cord was making a lot of changes where he was starting to, you know, literally start to feel more hope. And um, we brought him down to like once every other week at that point. Um, you know, nine months, this is the, the last x-ray I took, and this is probably the best we, we would get him. What do you notice? He's starting, they're starting to be uh, coming back. Yeah, that, that, that bones were still there, but see this atlas? Yeah. You see how it's tipped up? At this point, I mean, he was rarely getting those um, migraines. And this is Daryl here. This is his picture. And I, and I show him because he's a young guy. And what bothers me from here is that not, you know, the, the drugs is one thing. I mean, he shouldn't be on that age without many stuff. But, but more important to me is, is when he talks about, so I thank God for meeting Dr. Rosie because now I can be the dad I need to be to my daughter, Ny Nyla, where, where he couldn't, like, he didn't even want to be around, you know, the noise and stuff. And I still recall, and these are the things that I recall when my mom was not able to be around us or do what do for us. And this is what, what matters, guys. And this is why I get sometimes in your face, and, and I'm not doing it out of, um, I'm doing it because I want to make sure that you're there because you matter. And this is what this is about, guys. This is what, 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 what changing max, or maximizing your life is here, but it does take an effort on your part. Not everybody, it's not for everybody. I know not everybody wants to, start changing their diet, exercising, you know, fixing their spine. It's not for everybody. And I'm not here for everybody either. I can only serve those people who are ready. And that's where I'm going to tell you that most people that even want to change, what's the biggest holdback? I mean, what typically sets people back, even if they want to do this? The reality, that's the thing. The financial aspect is the biggest thing. And I'm here to serve, and we make different, you know, um, care plans that make it doable, but if I'm going to be here, this is why I'm transparent. I want to make sure that if we're going to be here serving you and, and, and pouring into you, that at least you're ready and that you're ready to take this on because it's it's not, I don't think it's that hard, but some people are just not mentally there yet. And we baby step people, sometimes people we do extreme, but the biggest thing is that you're ready because with the, the whole process, with the chiropractic stuff, of course, the, the nutrition, I mean, that's a the thing of itself. We do a lot of talks here, and they're like once a month. We do like we're doing a shop with Doc this um, 15th, where we show people how to eat. We do recipe nights. I mean, we're always doing these workshops, and you don't have to be at everyone, but that you show up to at least some of them so you can take this on. We do one on one consoles. We do, of course, you know, like we have Max T3 where you teach you how to exercise. We give you resources. I mean, I can go on and on. With each service, it'd be like a $300 visit. If I would be your chiropractor, your nutritionist, your exercise physiologist, your, you know, toxicologist with dealing with your toxins. So it's just not doable, guys. If you look at a, a plan with this phase one, we're looking at like maybe if you're a child 12 to 20, four visits. Once we hit into phase two where there's more DK, maybe, you know, 24 to 36, and then some, some people are in the 50s, but uh, it's not going to happen at $300 per visit. It's like a $10,000 plan. It's not going to cut it. Now, one day in the hospital, you do MRIs, stay at the hospital. How much would that be? You're looking at thousands of dollars, you know what I mean, or more. And so that's where people don't think about until they're in crisis. You understand when it comes to their health? So this is about changing your life, but I know 10,000 is just not gonna be affordable. So we make it doable, and we bring these plans less than 2,000, and we'll figure it out. We try to work with different um, situations, but if I'm gonna do that, I have to make sure that you're willing. And I do have to be compliant, too. If, if you understand insurance, do they really care about like showing you how to shop at the grocery? You know what I mean? That's what the stuff we do. They're more into what? When you're in masking the in crisis. Yeah. You understand? It's called sick care. 
For chiropractic, they call that medically necessary visits, and that's typically for pain for your low back. That's what they consider chiropractic for. And so typically, the, for the most, is maybe 8 to 12 visits. But if you're on a 24-visit plan, you know, the first 12 visits, if, if legally, I can't discount. Those right there, whether you have insurance or cash, I have to stay the same. But if you're on 24, who's responsible for the rest? You are. The person. Yeah. 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 So legally, I could do whatever I want with those, though. I don't, if I don't charge insurance, then I can write it off. I can discount. That's how we make it doable here. So what we do to make this doable is you're only paying for the first 12, and the rest I can either discount it or write it off. Okay. So this is how we make it doable. No one will talk more in private when it comes to your own personal finances. But the thing is, is that you know there still needs to be a commitment. If I'm going to commit financially and make this doable, I want to make sure that you're committed to your care. And number one is that we don't care more for your health than, than you do. That, in other words, um, um, apparently, uh, you know, you guys are committed, you came from two hours away, you know what I mean? But some people are just not even willing to drive the five, ten minutes, or at least call up. There's not, they can't make it, just call and say, Lily, I can't make it, let's reschedule it. My staff loves working here because they're not always having to, where are you, where are you, where are you, you know what I mean? We're, we're here for those people who want to be here. And then you do your exercises and all that. Number two, I just ask that you understand that we're a family office. So we check, like, we're going to be making sure that if you have kids, we're going to check them if you have a spouse, you know. You know, we want to make sure we take care of them. I wouldn't leave them at home. And I think the, the one that I really ask that if you're going to be a, a patient of ours is that you're on a mission. And what I mean by that is we don't, we pour into you all the time. But if you know somebody that's out there praying for answers and wanting help and you may be that answer and you don't tell them, then you're an interference in my eyes. And I hate to say this, but I'm bold about this. So how dare you not tell others that maybe there's another way. Now, if they reject you, that's their thing. It's kind of like I take my profession like I do my faith. I tell people about Jesus. If they're not ready, that's fine. But I, the same thing. It's your job to go at least, hey, you know what, maybe there's another way. And they do not judge them on finances. I will make sure I help them if I can. But the reality is that first it's your responsibility to tell them. So we do these classes and we do nutrition uh, dinners and all this stuff. We have a dinner in November where we'll say, here you go. Here's this dinner. You're signed up. But here's 10 more flyers so you can go share. And, and, and what they do, that's their thing, guys. And so that you're on a mission. And whether they're here or at another office, I mean, another state, like I will try to find somebody that's maximized living that does what we do to help them okay so that's really all i have to say i know that that's a lot but i know that if i'm transparent like this you get what we do here and now uh, we're going to go in privately right now and specifically go over your own x-rays go over your care your care plan based on what phase you're at phase one or phase two um and then we'll basically just ask you two things and one is um you know are you committed to doing this you know and, and and, uh, you know, do you, do you understand what's going on and are you committed to doing this? And if it is, then we can go forward and try to help you out and make some kind of an arrangement. And if it's not, I want to make sure I, I, that you understand that if I see you at Walmart, like, don't run away from me. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm, I'm going to love you no matter what. I'm going to probably go chase you down, you know. So I'm not here to judge you. Whatever decision you make, that's your thing. But I do ask for one thing, and this is that... Um, my biggest fear is that sometimes people go do more of the what? They same. leave you more, more of the same. And they want a, a different result. And so that they know they have issues and have to work with them, but they still eat the same, don't exercise, don't go get, maybe find another chiropractor or something. Do something, you know, and never lose hope in, in, in him. He's, he's your healer. And that's all I have to say, guys. So uh, thank you for your time.